very, very interesting game. Uh, and we will talk a bit about the space advantage, but uh, I will ask you various questions. So I will be reading the chat as usual and waiting for your suggestions. So now I'm just going to make sure that everything is fine here. Opening the chat before we before we begin i'm just going to wait a few more minutes for everybody to join so nobody loses any part of this very interesting game it's a game of uh, Taimur Rajabo with the white pieces and here he was playing against uh, Bu Shanzi from china so I'm just going to open all the chats. Just bear with me for a moment until I find the stream. <laughs> all right. Okay, um, Johan, if you could help me out with the link please will be much appreciated and now I'm going to open the Twitch as well let's see how our community on Twitch is doing sorry for the slight delay we have had some technical problems here okay and now I have the YouTube and I'm just going to open the Twitch as well and see what everybody has to say here. Okay. Great. Just a few more minutes and I will be ready to start seeing this game. Okay, let me just... All right. Okay, hello, now I can see everybody here. There was something wrong with my uh, YouTube, I think, but now everything's fine. So, now we can begin. Hello, everybody. I see uh, many people have joined already. So I was telling you that we are going to look a bit at the space advantage today. Um, this is a very, very interesting game and we're going to go uh, slowly over it. Um, the opening phase, well, here is where I'm not going to stop uh, very often, but I am going to tell you a bit about this opening. So we have the Slav defense here, E3, and now uh, Black plays the move A6. Uh, the idea is to follow up with b5 at some point um, after taking on c4 or even without taking on c4 as uh, it happened in this game white played knight f3 and here b5 and in this position rajabov goes for the move c5 closing the center and he wants to uh, take the game to a position where we will have many maneuvers white has a very powerful center and he will have slightly more space so in this game the chinese player continued with g6 which uh, has been a very interesting idea has been played by another very strong uh, chinese niwa um, there are other moves here probably knight d7 being uh, one of the most popular it was made very popular by uh, aronian in baikanse when he beat Gelfan and Bambeli with the black pieces. And it actually uh, gets to some very interesting complications because here well, I'm, I'm showing you now the game between Gelfan and Aronian. Uh, Gelfan went here bishop d3. And uh, black's idea in this position is to go e5. So he's immediately opening up the center. He's losing a pawn, but then he's taking it uh, back pretty soon. For example, this pawn on c5 is going to be 
hanging in some lines and then the pawn on e5 is not so easy to hold on to either. So here knight e5 was played, knight takes, d takes, the knight is under attack so black for now cannot take on c5 but there's knight g4. f4 if we want to keep that pawn, bishop c5, uh, black gets back the pawn and now the pawn on e3 is under attack. So this line gives black um, a very good, very good play. Queen f3 was played to have this pawn defended, but now how do we put more pressure uh, on this pawn? Let me see what the chat suggests here. I will be reading both chats, by the way, uh, YouTube and Twitch. So feel free to make suggestions here. What do you think is Black's uh, idea? How can he put more pressure on this pawn, get pieces out? d4, immediately opening up. Okay, d4 looks very interesting, but then the pawn on c6, right? Uh, what are we doing about that pawn? I take on c6, the bishop is hanging. So d4, there's something... Oops. Have to get back to getting used to with the arrows. So uh, I have a, you have some problems on c6 if you play d4. Mm, but queen b6, I've seen a couple of suggestions here. Queen b6 is the move played in the game and it looks pretty strong, right? We attack e3 and how does white uh, defend here? King e2 uh, was the move played in, uh, in the game, the move that Gelfand played here. But now the king stays in the center. It's true that black is not opening up just yet. Um, but he played knight h6. And the idea is to get this knight to f5. Just find some better squares for the knight before it remains out of play on the king's side. h3, preparing g4, knight e7. And here white goes bishop d2. I'm just going to briefly show you uh, this game. Rook c1, and it's already very, I would say it's comfortable for black. Uh, how, do, how do we continue here with, uh, with black? Let me just flip the board for you. How can we try to make the most of the bad uh, position of the king here? What can, we, what can we try? Yeah, king e2, well, it looks ugly, but then what are you going to do about the pawn on e3? g5 in this position g5 look, looks a bit over optimistic if uh, you are talking about this position yasan okay so d4 is a suggestion here f6 is another suggestion and f5 um, well, between f6 and f5, I would say that f6 is certainly uh, more forcing. Uh, white cannot stop you from opening the center, right? And on d4, the thing about d4 was that white doesn't uh, necessarily have to take. And I think here after d4, the idea is that at some point we will be able to play knight e4, probably right away. Yeah, knight e4, I'm attacking the bishop on c5. And white will um, hold on to this nice center. If everything gets traded on, on e3, then the king will actually be of a very strong piece uh, if we trade queens in this position. So white has nothing to worry about. But the other suggestion that you guys uh, were giving f6 looks very interesting. Why? Because now with the king in the center, with black, we are very interested in opening up the position. So we want to open the central files, we want to bring the rook into the game, and eventually, why not start pressuring this pawn on e3? Maybe our rook could get to the e-file. So pawn takes f6 was played, rook takes, and here, uh, bravely, white went e4. Um, well, he's trying to force matters. He understands that in this position the pawn on e3 might be a problem. Of course there are other moves, probably 
h4, uh, that's something white would play here. e4 is definitely not uh, forced, but it leads to uh, a very interesting position. He's basi basing uh, his idea on the fact that if pawn takes, then knight takes. We have seen this before. Now we have a rook on f6, and uh, here there's a double attack. And if rook e6, then there's f5, right? And it feels like white is uh, is doing fine in this position. Maybe, I don't know, maybe winning is over-optimistic, but I like uh, white's position for now. So after e4, he played bishop d4. White took here. Pawn takes. And now king to d1 was played. So he's trying to find a safe uh, spot for the king. Rook f7. And get the bishop out. And now knight to g6. So he wants to uh, put pressure on f4. And improve the knight. If white goes f5, then I get the square e5 for my knight. Basically, if f5, the knight goes to e5. So here white took on g6. True, we're going to have some doubled pawns on the g file, but on the other hand, black uh, obtains the bishop pair in this position. The king is still in the center, so this is very, very dangerous for white, who needs to uh, be very careful in this position. He continued with queen e6, kind of forcing the trades, but even here, black is doing really well. d4 will come at some point. He played rook e6, bishop moves away, and now d4, and I just wanted to show you one last position here after rook takes g6. This was uh, an exercise that I wanted to show you how will black continue in this position? How did the game finish? Rook e8. Okay, we have something much better than rook e8. Okay, there's bishop f3, but what happens? I, I just go king e1. King is flying away. So why does bishop f3 win immediately? Uh, how's your line? It's probably winning as well, but king e1? Okay, uh, walkie TV, that's correct. Hold on, bishop f3. Uh, I misread that. Bishop f3 and rook e8. Yeah, king f1. There is a move that does win immediately here. Bishop f2, yes. You guys are spotting that. And instead of bishop f3, we have the move bishop f2, which prepares bishop f3 with mate and attacks the knight on g3. So that's uh, winning on the spot, right? Bishop f2. White still tried to fight here. He played bishop a3. And what do we. Uh, bishop a5, I'm sorry. And what do we do here? Yeah, that was easy. <laughs> Bishop f2 was maybe too easy. You were expecting something more complicated. Take the knight, and after I take on d8... Rook e8. 
yeah, maybe rookie eight will eventually win as well. For sure, rookie eight will win. Uh, but even more direct than rookie eight, you guys should check out the most forcing lines first. So someone was saying, take the knight. Why don't you uh, check that line out until the end? What happens after bishop g3? You saw bishop take the eight, but is that all? Is that all there is about this line? So I'm going to give you a hint. The first move is bishop g3, but what do we do? Yes, exactly. Bishop f3 and then bishop f4. You can do this. Um, well, you can start with bishop f3. You can start by with bishop g3. The line transposes. Uh, here, white resigned. But the point is that after bishop d8, um, this line that you were suggesting, bishop takes f4, is winning for black. King takes d3. And then... Here, <laughs> here we can decide what we want to take. We can take the rook on c1. We can also play rook d7 check. That's up to you. But it will be a lot of material ahead for black. So uh, this was one of Aronian's wins uh, with knight to d7 in the opening. But I just wanted to briefly show you black's ideas here. But now let's go back to our game. I'm going to flip the board back and let's see what happened after g6. Well, after g6, what will white do? Knight e5. If black allows uh, this move, then we are happy to uh, control the center. One of the ideas of playing knight e5 as well is that the knight on b8 will be uh, buried for a long time. There is no knight d7 because this pawn on c6 uh, will be hanging in most of uh, the lines. So if black wants to get that knight out, he will first need to uh, defend c6. Now bishop g7 was played, and here um, white went bishop e2. There are other moves, again, uh, one typical idea after we play knight e5 in, uh, in the opening is to follow up with f4, for example. And here there are some very interesting ideas for the black player, for example, now uh, we said that knight b to d7 cannot be played, but knight f to d7 is one idea to uh, kick this knight out of e5. Knight d3, and here a5. This was a game uh, played by Niwa with the black pieces against Inarkiev. So now they are preparing b4, white went here g4. And this was, let's say, the aggressive approach of the line. So we want to play a 4, g4, and uh, start the attack quickly on the king's side. But now, try to think about a move for black. So let's just go back to flipping the board and seeing this from black's side. What can we do in this position with black? If your opponent starts throwing the pawns at you without developing the pieces, what moves... Uh, would you be considering in this position? So what do we do here with black? Sorry, d3. Um, you mean e6? e6 can be played, but that's um, that's very passive for now. b4, continue development with short castle. b4 is a move, I agree. Short castle... Um, can also be played. I have to say that I would be afraid to castle short here with black. It looks, uh, it looks scary, no? If they play g4 and you just go ahead and castles, um, I guess h4 and h5 is coming. B4 
b4, knight f6 to e4, that's one idea. And then there's this idea that uh, I see now suggested to go e5 right away. And e5 is what happened in the game, which looks really interesting, right? If your opponent keeps the king in the center and just uh, weakens um, his position so much, it makes sense for us to open the center right away, open the pieces and try to punish this. So e5 is really interesting here. Uh, and how do we follow up after pawn takes e5? What could we do here? Because obviously white is not going to castle too soon. The king is going to stay in the center. So we need to have that in mind uh, when deciding on a plan here. Queen h4 is of course the most obvious um, idea. Giving the check, knight f2, right? So I don't lose my right to castle just in case. I eventually castle long maybe, but that's scary too because b4 is coming. But knight f2 is probably the move after queen h4. Do you guys have any other suggestions? Queen h4, I agree, is a good move. And just castle, right? Is that your idea? Because that can be played, for example. Uh, but here you need to look for opening the center a little more. And this is one idea that we saw in Aronian's game as well. Basically, in a very, very similar position. When we wanted to open the center, this move f6 is uh, very strong. And he's keeping the check on h4 for later, because a piece will land on h4. Uh, the bishop or the knight will give a check. So here pawn takes f6, bishop takes, bishop g2, and now bishop h4. And here white play king d2, and it was a really wild game. Black castle short. Um, and he eventually won this. But as you can see, um, this does look quite scary for white. So we could say that his aggressive approach here with f4 and g4 didn't quite work out. No? So f4 here, remember this idea. When they go g4, e5 uh, can be very strong. So now let's see how the game uh, went. Okay, doesn't f6 weaken the king side? So here in the final position, f6. Um, f6 here is meant to open the f-file. White cannot really um, attack our king. And the point of uh, going f6 is bringing more pieces into the attack, bringing the bishop in, uh, opening the f-file. And e6, what happens here? Okay? I imagine this is what you mean. e6, I think knight f8 can be played and the pawn is lost. I'm going to take with the knight on e6. It's true that the position will not be so open um, against the white king, but okay, castles and f5 will be played um, after all. After bishop g2 maybe, then I can take on e6. Castle and I want to play for the move f5, again to open uh, the center. Maybe better than what happened in the game. We don't have to end up with a king on d2. All right, but let's go back to our game because this uh, was not our subject of today. Those were just some interesting lines for you to know. And here white played bishop e2, which is the well safer approach, let's say. We want to castle first and then uh, we will play for f4 and other ideas uh, in the center and king side. So black castles castle short and again we see this move knight to d7 trying to uh, kick this knight out of e5 f4 protecting the knight here uh, black went a5 there are other moves of course uh, the same Niwa had played f5 in this position f5 directly this is also possible but let's focus on uh, today's game so now a3, and this was a novelty at that point. So this move A3 had never been played uh, before. This was in 2008. He played A3 stopping B4. And here we see again 
this idea of playing f6 and in this case the move f6 is meant to um, make us take a decision what are we going to do about the knight on e5 so what are we going to do about the knight on e5 what do you think what are we going to play with white in this position we have a few options here but which one do you think is best retreat where are we going to retreat knight d3 okay any other ideas here any other opinions sacrifice on c6 for two pawns yeah that's probably <laughs> too soon. I think black gets... I mean, I don't see enough compensation there. Knight d3. So everybody's going for knight d3. No. Somebody also says knight f3. Why not knight f3? No, I didn't say knight f3 was a bad move. So nobody wants to take the knight on d7. Why don't you guys want to take the knight on d7? Still for knight c6. <laughs> Very aggressive approach, knight takes c6. But knight takes c6 also helps uh, our opponent get the pieces out. So you help him develop the knight from b8. You get two pawns, it's true, but... Um, well, if you look at this position, that knight uh, won't be developed soon. So yes, that's correct. We were not taking on d7 because we don't want to help develop uh, the black knight, the black bishop. But also because here, what do we have? Uh, we have more space, thanks to that pawn on c5. And one thing to remember is that when you have a space advantage, uh, it's usually best to avoid peace trades. So here we... Uh, will retreat the knight. Yes, Dr. Chess, I am reading the chat and I am taking suggestions from the chat right now. So here, knight f3 is the move played. f5. And what are we going to do now? How do we continue? Where is Magnus? Magnus is probably preparing for his match against Nakamura right now. Knight g5 is a suggestion, okay, knight g5, uh, with the idea of knight e6, but I think that can be easily d uh, defended with knight f6. Can he go back with the knight? Yes, knight e5 is an option, for sure, knight e5 is an option, but what about the rest of our pieces? Okay, I see a very interesting suggestion there, queen e1, queen h4, and then knight g5, yes. That's a very interesting idea. I like that. Developing more pieces. So we, we need to bring everybody into, into the game right now. So Queen E1 does that, but uh, we still have, I think the biggest problem for white in this position, uh, probably agree with me, is the bishop on C1. So how are we going to develop everything? Maybe rook b1 and b4, uh, but here white is not the one playing on the queen side. On the queen side it's black who will try to create some counterplay. In these positions white usually plays on the king side. Bishop d2, yeah, bishop d2, and then? Are there any <laughs> more active uh, ideas for, for bringing the bishop? Bishop d2, bishop e1, and then maybe bishop g3. Okay, you are very close, Dr. Chess. Uh, this is a very nice maneuver that you are suggesting here. Bishop d2, e1, h4. Okay, so you guys are improving over uh, the previous idea. And I like this. We can go first 
bishop d2, bishop e1, and this bishop will end up on h4, and then we'll see, right? Uh, queen e1 will still be possible, but first it's best to bring the bishop, and then the queen will join. So here he started doing exactly this, bishop d2, knight f6, and following up with the plan that we were seeing. Okay, so first phase has finished. We have brought the bishop on h4, and now it's time to find something else to do. What do we do now? Yeah, it's like a stone wall. It's true. In the stone wall, black has the idea of developing the bishop from c8 uh, via d7 and e8, and, do you, and we do this uh, here with white. No, I don't do streams daily, but do follow up, uh, follow coaches on Facebook and all the streams will be announced there. My next stream will be on Friday though. 95 now, queen e1. Uh, both 95 and queen e1 look good, but there is a slight difference between them. What do you think is the difference between 95 and queen e1? Knight e5. Yeah, everybody agrees on knight e5. Bishop takes f6 is a move that I don't like very much here. Uh, because, again, we're kind of helping black um, get rid of some pieces. He lacks space here. Um, and we don't really need to take that bishop right away. Maybe our bishop will be strong on h4 in the future. So knight e5, uh, you guys think, is best first. 95 to open the bishop? Okay, yes, 95 to open the bishop. But the big idea of 95 and why I think is best in this position before queen e1 is because if we play queen e1 right now, we also have to think about what our opponent wants to do. So we were seeing that uh, he had all these problems with the knight on b8, and now after bishop e6, he's ready to go knight d7, right? Knight d7, the bishop is out, so the knight is not blocking the bishop anymore. So here is the difference. Uh, if we go queen e1 right away, then knight d7 will be possible. But if we start with knight e5, then knight d7 um, will not be possible right now. So black will have to waste another move to first defend c6. And this is what happened in the game, queen c7. And now he's preparing knight b to d7. OK, and what do we do now? What's our next plan? Can we go knight a2, knight c1, knight d3? And then knight e5 is stronger. We can do that, um, but uh, I don't think white is really worried about any piece taking on e5, because we will take back with the f-pawn probably. The knight on f6 will have to find a square, and we gain even more space. So we have an idea with rook f3. There's another idea of g4. Okay. You guys are very aggressive with g4. King h1, g4, or h3 and g4. Yeah, um, g4 is definitely one of our ideas here. But uh, one of the things I would, uh, I always advise before you start uh, pushing the pawns and opening the position is to make sure that you are going to have enough pieces to follow up with your attack. So here you go g4. Um, yeah, we trade probably everything on g4. And then you're kind of out of bullets, right? And basically g4 is not going anywhere. So what you can do in this position is keep improving your pieces and make sure that everybody will be there when you eventually get to play g4. So there's an idea that I liked here, queen e1. Bishop g5 and queen h4. Yeah, that looks really good. Uh, we can bring the queen on h4 first. And that creates some threats. After the queen gets on g4, on h4, then there are threats on g6. Imagine there's a queen here. We want to play knight takes g6. We are winning a pawn. So everything will come with a gain of time. So queen e1. This was uh, 
very nice idea here, knight d7, and here, bishop to g5. Well, and here, what to do with black? Um, it's a very difficult position because uh, there is no very good plan what to do, no? The knight cannot move from, f from f6 because then this pawn on e7 will be uh, under attack, so there's no knight e4 for now. What to do? What would you guys suggest for black here? h6? h6, and you are not afraid of knight takes g6. Why? Knight takes g6, I will take on g6. And on king h7, I will take on f6, and my knight is coming out. Capture the, the knight. That's what happened in the game. Yep, knight e5 is what we are going to see next. There was also this rook f to e8 to defend the pawn on e7, maybe, to put the knight on e4. But here I wanted to show you how the attack would continue, and here is where all your ideas will come together. Because after rook e8, we finally get to play queen h4, and we want to take the pawn on g6. So now black has to do something about that. For example, king g8. I think that's kind of uh, only move here, get out of the h file, and here all your ideas can be played. Someone suggested before rook f3. This is very strong to bring the rook to the h file. But then someone else suggested h3, and this is also very strong now. And you can see the difference. Now you play g4, your queen is already on h4, and you will be ready to bring one of the rooks to the h file. So you are much better prepared right now to uh, continue the attack. Why is black not resigning? I don't know. Our opponents could definitely resign sooner in, in the games. Of course, black is not lost, but it's very difficult to find something good for black here. He has less space and it feels like white's ideas are much clearer. We have a, a clear idea uh, and black uh, still needs to find a way to arrange his pieces. Probably knight e4, uh, that's what he was playing for, but then g4 is coming. So yeah, difficult position for black. Now let's go back to the game and see what happened after knight takes e5. This was a move you were suggesting. Now f takes e5. We want to keep the center strong, keep the pawn on d4, and open uh, the f file for the rook knight e4. And here white plays the move knight takes e4. This is not the only move. Um, I just want to know your opinions uh, on this position. What do you think? Do you agree with knight e4? Do you like this move? Or do you have a different suggestion here? Queen h4, okay. Queen h4 looks good. Queen h4, and then take that strong knight. Okay, Harshit, please stop uh, with the spamming. So, queen h4 here, and then uh, someone else suggesting g4. Queen h4 and doubling rooks, rook f4. Is, no, rook f4 is not playable actually. There's a knight, uh, there's a bishop hanging on g5. So we have two moves here, taking on e4 and queen h4, and both look very good, but they have different ideas. Let's look at your suggestion of playing queen h4, and this move, well, you could say that it gives up the bishop pair. Yes, it does, but here the center is closed and the bishops are not very powerful. So the idea of queen h4 is to uh, force black to do something about this bishop on g5 because we want to take the pawn on e7 after queen h4 yeah we want to take here um and well another idea of queen h4 is 
uh, to follow up with G4. Uh, Dr. Chess, I will answer your question in a moment. Uh, let me just finish my idea here. So here after knight takes g5, queen takes, we keep the knight and black's bishops are very, very bad, right? The bishop on e6 has no future and the bishop on g7 is hitting against our pawn chain. So what are we going to do next here? Um, there are plenty of ideas we could uh, try. One of them would be to bring the knight to f4. This would be the first thing I would look at, put the bishop on d3, have a knight on f4, and then somehow open up the king side. I say somehow because uh, with the knight on f4, there's the idea of h4, h5 as well. You are looking at g4, but I think now h4, h5 would be very strong. So this is a position that can be played. And the other position when knight takes e4 can also be played. Uh, I was telling you that here the bishops are not doing much, but our bishop on g5 is a very strong piece. It was a very bad piece on c1, but now it has become um, a very uncomfortable piece for our opponent because we always hit this pawn on e7 and black needs to defend the pawn on e7 all the time. So before I move on to my next question, which is what should black take with here on e4, I'm going to answer a question uh, which was who is better in this end games, in this structure. Well, that very much depends on the kind of end game that we have. Because um, if we think about a king's, a pawn's end game, uh, it will probably be very difficult to find a way to break through. But if we have some minor pieces left, then we will be able to attack uh, black's weaknesses. Black will have some weaknesses on a5, and if we can force one of those pawns to move, then our king will uh, will get active easily via b4, a5. So it it depends very much on what kind of endgame you you are talking about. So what do we take here with d pawn, d pawn, f pawn. Is there any reason <laughs> for taking with the d pawn or the f pawn? Why, why one and not the other? Take with the f pawn to open the, the file, to give black access to the open file. Okay, f takes e4 is better because we want to release some pressure by exchanging rooks. That all makes a lot of sense. Take with the d pawn f pawn will free the bad bishop, will it? The bishop on e6 uh, doesn't really have that much future on that diagonal. d pawn will open the bishop, yeah? d takes bishop f7, h6 and g5. Sure, yeah, that's, that's probably great if we can manage that, but remember that the queen is coming to h4. So d to open the bishop line. Okay, here the d pawn was slightly better for black. But there is a very clear reason for that, uh, because if uh, if we take into account what you guys were saying about opening the f file, taking with the f pawn also makes a lot of sense. But you have to apply this um, concept to the position that we have right now. So you want to trade pieces, but you need to make sure that you will actually trade pieces on the f file. Are you really going to trade both rooks on the f file? Who is going to take over the f file in in the end? Yes, you are going to trade both rooks. <laughs> but what, what is white doing after f takes e4? Remember the idea? Okay, if you take with the d pawn, c6 is a weakness. c6 is a weakness anyway, right? But white cannot really get to it. Rook f5 plan. Okay. Yes, there are many plans, but as I was saying, try to look at move my, by move. So what is white doing after f takes e4? Queen h4, that's right. And the pawn on e7. The pawn on e7 is a big problem for black. And that pawn on e7 needs to be defended by a rook. So we are never getting our rooks on the f-file. 
not both of them anyway. And that's the reason why here it was slightly better for black to take with the deep on. He will still be under a lot of pressure. It doesn't mean that things have gotten much better for him, but at least white is not, is not getting so much uh, play either. Of course, white will follow up uh, with queen h4. And here, um, black can defend this pawn in many ways, rook e8, rook a7, um, even rook f7, right, is a move. But of course, white's idea will be g4, and there is a lot of pressure. So let's just flip here back and see that g4 is white's next idea. Very complicated position, very difficult position for the black player. But you will see what happened after f takes e4 in a moment, and you will agree that this is a better version. This is the best version that he could have gotten out of this uh, position. So let us go back to knight takes e4 and see what happened after f takes e4. So you have already sp uh, spotted the idea for white here, queen h4, and we are hitting uh, this pawn on e7. And now black needs to defend the pawn. He took on f1 first, rook takes, and rook e8. And this is another very important um, moment of the game. This is another, uh, is a critical moment, let's call it, because we need to find a good move to Im keep improving our position. Rook f5, wait, rook f5, but rook f5, you're losing the pawn on e7, or aren't you, you are willing to give up that pawn? Queen h4 is threatening e7, so here rook f5, if it's here where you are suggesting rook f5, Kartik here, bishop e7, what happens after bishop e7? Bishop g4, yeah, that's a, that's another suggestion that, that looks good here after rook f5. Rook f5 loses a bishop. Um, I don't think it loses a bishop because I take on f1 with check. But yes, it does lose at least a pawn, the pawn on e7. So let's go back to this position and try to find further ideas for white. g4 in this position uh, rook h5 no that's not possible rook h5 here rook f7 rook f7 here but bishop takes f7 bishop g4 i have this suggestion from four people so i like this bishop g4 why bishop g4? What's your idea? Bishop h6. The thing about bishop h6 in this position, and why I don't like this move very much, is that we are releasing the pressure we have right now on e7, and we are offering a trade um, of our good bishop on g5 for his bad bishop on g7. Okay, so the idea of bishop g4 is to get the rook to f7. Yeah, that's a very good idea. The bishop on e6 is a very bad bishop. But as it happens in many positions, um, these bad bishops control important squares, important entry squares for our pieces, important weaknesses, and at some point we will need to um, force the trade of these pieces so we can make improvements in the position. So here, bishop g4 is such a move. The bishop on e6 is definitely not one of black's best pieces, but uh, it does defend the square f7 where we want to bring the rook. So now black has a few options, yes? Uh, one is bishop e g8, the other one is queen d7, and we're going to start with bishop g8 since queen d7 was the game, and we're going to see what happened afterwards. So what are we going to do after bishop g8? h3 with the idea of bishop g4 sure yeah but if you can play bishop g4 right away 
uh, you don't need to waste a move and play h3. e6. Okay, any other ideas besides e6? e6 looks, looks flashy, looks like a, a nice move, but then your pawn on e6 will be a weakness, black will be able to attack it, and then you are kind of allowing that bishop on g7 to slightly breathe. So you don't want to trade bishops because uh, black's backward pawns are on light squares and you want to attack them with, my bi with your bishop. Yes, uh, that's one way to see it, but before getting with the bishop on d7, um, well, you'll need to work a lot. h3, bishop h6. Okay, bishop h6 can be probably played now because the king is not getting to g8 anymore. But there is another very... Yes, Mario, that's correct. Queen h3 with the idea of bishop e6 is very, very strong here. So if you want to follow up with uh, rook f7, this move makes a lot of sense. This is really nice. Queen h3 with the idea of bishop e6. But what happens? Because now it looks like black plays e6 himself. And then... No, bishop e6, no? What happens in this position? Very nice. Very, very nice. Rook f6. Look at this move. So the pawn on e6 have stopped, has stopped our idea, but then it's left so many dark squares weak around the king. Bishop f6, yes, bishop f6 can be played, but rook f6 is, is a killer. Rook f6 wins on the spot. And, well, the idea is that now we attack both pawns, both e6 and g6. Remember that the pawn on h7 is pinned, so we are going to take one of the pawns. Winning right away, and bishop takes f6, bishop takes, that's going to lose the queen. So here white is completely winning. Now, let's go back to the game and see queen d7. Yeah, this was the other defense for black. What do we do in this position? Probably black has seen uh, all these ideas when he uh, took on e4 earlier, when he played f takes e4, but I imagine that it's next move that it's the next move that he missed in his calculation. So let's see what can you come up with here. Bishop takes e6. All right, but the idea of queen d7 is to take back with the queen, right? And then the queen defends f7. Still a difficult position for black. He will still need to have to defend uh, e7 all the time, but we lose the idea of rook f7. Rook f7, everybody. Nice. Very nice. Rook f7 here. Okay, but have you seen everything? What happens after bishop takes g4? What do you play in this position? Bishop e7, rook e7, bishop f6, bishop h6, so many suggestions. Bishop h6 and bishop f6, they both look very good, and I see that bishop f6 is definitely getting more votes here. Yeah, bishop f6. Rook f6 instead of rook f7 is not the same as before, because now there's a pawn on e7, so I'm not sure how that uh, works out. We can check it out. So bishop f6, yeah, your guys are uh, 
believing in bishop in bishop f6 and that's very good um bishop f6 and bishop h6 might look similar but there are some differences here uh, bishop f6 is the move that leads to a win uh, bishop h6 not so much because here black has some amazing defensive resources now he, he cannot take on h6 that's your idea because then queen takes will be made on h7 but he can play rook g8 and now after rook e7 here is where he can defend really well okay i will give you a few moments to find a good defensive move for black here Why not rook takes g7 in the first place? We will check that out. Rook takes g7 instead of bishop h6, is that it? So here, queen f5, queen c8, queen d8. Queen c8 and queen d8 are going to lose. Queen f5 is one of the move that you can play here with black. Queen takes e7. Yeah. And then take the bishop on h6. But then that position will be lost. You lose all the pawns on the queen side. So if queen takes e7, just to get this out of the way. Queen takes, bishop here. Um, queen f6 is one of the moves that I see here. And just grab all the pawns on the queen side. Just take on c6 and win everything here. g5. Yes, that's the only move that hasn't been suggested and it's a very strong one. g5 is a very strong defensive idea here. Um, and the idea of queen f5 was in fact similar. That you want to have the queen uh, close to h7 and you want to have the idea of g5 later. But it seems more forcing to start with g5. And then after bishop takes, black's idea is to play queen f5. We will still have compensation, that's for sure, but uh, this is not so clear anymore. Queen takes g5 doesn't work here because then bishop takes h6. And here black is even winning. Queen d8, let's check queen d8 out. Uh, queen d8 is losing here. I cannot take the bishop on g4 because I'm pinned, but then this move is very strong. Bishop g5, threatening a discovered attack, and the bishop on g4. And here white is, is doing very well. So bishop h6 and bishop f6 are not similar. There was rook g7 here as a suggestion. Uh, rook takes g7 right away. And king takes. But what's the follow-up? That's um, that's what I want to know. Because if bishop h6 or queen h6, I'm going to g8. And my queen is coming to f5 next. So here, um, we kind of run out of bullets with white. We have no more pieces to bring into the attack. Well, you are talking about this line with a uh, queen sacrifice. Queen takes e7, bishop takes queen f6, and here is where you want to play. No, 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 I'm not losing e3 because on rook g7 I'm not going to take on c6 anymore. What am I going to play here? What move wins in this position? Yeah, queen f8. That's correct. Queen h6, there's still bishop e3, which was black's idea, but queen f8 wins the bishop. Rook g8, and now queen takes h6. Game over. Okay, but let's get back to our lines here and see this amazing move. Bishop f6. Which is really nice, uh, because black is pinned on every side. The bishop cannot take because of queen takes h7, and then pawn takes loses the queen. 
And in this position, he did decide to give up the queen, so that's why I didn't insist very much on that endgame, because here we will see a very similar position. Um, because here rook takes d7. No? Um, just one quick uh, stop here, that if rook g8, then we can take on e7, and here the bishop is already on f6, so we are not wasting a lot of time. The bishop on g4 uh, is not very stable either. We might want to play h3 next and g4. Let's see where that bishop wants to go. So e takes, f6 was played, and of course now rook takes d7, bishop takes, and pawn takes f6. And here black has a very difficult choice. Uh, he can give up the bishop, which is what happened in the game, and get rid of that powerful pawn on the f file, or he can try to play bishop f8, let that pawn be, and hope to survive this. But this is not going to be uh, easy to defend. In fact, here black is lost for the same reasons we were seeing before that the whole queen side is going to fall apart. And here f7, and the queen gets in. Queen f6 and queen d6. Bishop f5. And now h3 is a very strong move. Threatening g4 and provoking some weaknesses on the king side. And after black uh, weakens a little bit more the king side, then uh, we will be able to pick the pawns up. For example, here g5. Well, h5, yes, h5 is a move also, but then we can still play g4, right? g4 and give this pawn up, but then I'm going to take the, uh, the pawn on g6, and there are all kinds of threats with queen check on the h file. So, what's happening now? I think white's already winning material, right? Bishop f3 looks like the only move to keep the h5 square defended, but then what move do I have? Queen f5, yeah, queen f5 was the move I was looking at. Queen e6 uh, is similar. Queen f5 with the idea of queen h3 and attacking the rook on c8, so this is also losing for black. And the other move, uh, g5, can we take bishop takes g4? Uh, when? We did take on g4 after h5, g4, and here we took everything on g4. You mean take now with the bishop? Yes, but that's a piece less for black, and that's going to be losing. We keep uh, winning material here. So g5 is the other option after g3, but here comes the idea. No, of course, queen e6, I said, is the same idea. Queen f5 and queen e6 is similar, are similar. The same idea, winning, uh, winning material. So here f8 queen is the point. We want to force a rook out of c8 and then win all the pawns on the queen side. Queen d5, all the pawns are falling apart. Not bishop takes f8, because here after bishop takes f8, we have this check on f6. Or on e5, again, they are similar. We are still winning the bishop, which is the important uh, idea. So let me show you how the game continued. Because what black tried to do here is uh, achieve a fortress. So he decided to give the dark square bishop right away. He played a4, closing the position, uh, but hoping that this will be a fortress and a white will not be able to uh, break through. However, this position is still lost, but I want you to try to find a plan for white here uh, to improve our position, how to make progress after this. What's my Instagram handle? It's my name. 
You just search my name and there you found me. G4, Queen F4, Queen F4. Well, here there are many moves, but I want to know an idea. Queen F4 with the idea of Queen D6 or Queen C7. Yeah, but then I'm going to defend, yes? I'm going to try to defend with the rook on the seventh rank, for example. So imagine I defend with my rook on uh, f7 or e7 uh, while you try to get to d6 or c7. I think that's the kind of fortress that black had in mind, that he will defend the bishop on d7 with the rook and then only with the queen white will not be able to pick up any pawns. Maybe get the king into the game. Mm, that looks interesting, that sounds interesting. How do we do that? King f2 or else king gets stuck on g1 after rook f8. I agree. Yeah, king f2. So king f2 is a good move. Just pass the king over. Is that... Bring the king. Where exactly bring the king? Because as you can see here, black cannot do much. He will have to wait while you... Put your ideas in practice, basically. So imagine that you have an unlimited number of moves. Where exactly? King d6. Yes. Uh, King c7 is probably enough, right? We don't really have to get it to d6. If we got the king to c7, uh, it's probably enough. But yeah, of course, king d6. <laughs> king d6 is always uh, an improvement over king c7. So now... Yeah, queen f4 and queen d6... What I was saying about this idea is that black will try to defend with the rook. So basically you're going to need more pieces in order to make it work. So your idea of putting a queen on d6 is very good. It just needs to be supported by another piece. Hence the idea of bringing the king to c7 first. So what does white do here? King f2. And we are going to witness a long journey of the king from g1 all the way to the queen side. King e1. Rook e6. Okay, now he plays queen g3. Uh, as you were suggesting, the queen uh, is doing fine on this diagonal. We want to have queen c7 or queen d6 uh, as a threat. Will we not check and capture the rook? Uh, well, if the rook stays on the f file, f7, that's what I was thinking. Why not queen e1? But why queen e1? What's the idea of queen e1? There are many moves in the uh, in the initial position, but what we need to find is actually uh, an idea, something to, to make it work. Of course, you can play around with the queen, but black will also stay put and keep the bishop on d7 defended by the rook and try to hold on to that. Yes, that's the point. King d2, c3, b4, a5, and that's why a4 was not such a great idea from uh, the black player. And Dr. Chess, you were asking me before about end games. That's why I, uh, I told you that it depends a lot on the end game because if you give me this end game with the white pieces, the uh, pawns end game, only with the kings, white will probably win this anyway uh, because uh, we have an entry square via b4, a5. So here g5 was played and the king advances all the way to c7. It was a, this was an impressive game from Rajabov, king f8, and king c7. And black has nothing better to do. He needs to keep waiting here. Now the rook is on e6, so he goes king d7. And what is our idea? Well, if they allow us queen g4, and we can give back material already, because our king is very powerful, and if we take the, the rook and bishop for the queen, we will win all the pawns. So he goes king f8. Okay, now queen f2 uh, with the idea of playing queen f5. Queen f5 now. And black is already very close to being in Zugzwang. There is uh, uh, very little he can play uh, in this position still. He played h5 and here g3 and black resigned. He will lose material um, on almost every almost every move. Any pawn advance, if the, mo uh, the rook moves to e6, then we're going to sacrifice the queen. So, yeah, this was a great show from Rajabov. 
So as you saw here, we, we see a position where White has space advantage, where he tried to keep uh, the pieces on the board and then uh, look for activity on the king's side. He played a lot against the black pieces, played a lot against the black bishops, uh, but in the end he was not stuck with the idea that the bishops were very bad and you saw how uh, the bishop on e6, uh, he was ready to trade the bishop on e6 to allow his pieces to become um, more active. So, uh, I'm going to take a few questions now. Uh, you guys let me know uh, if you like this, uh, what would you like to, what kind of lessons you'd like to see in the future, um, what kind of lessons uh, you wouldn't like to see. Uh, do I have a course on Chessable? No, I don't, but I am a coach on Coaches, so you guys can go there and book a lesson with me. What is my schedule time for the lectures? I don't have a fixed schedule for now, uh, but um, we'll try to make this uh, usual if you guys like it. Opening lessons. <laughs> Well, the opening part depends very much on each player, right? So there, uh, uh, that's more personal. I do have a somewhat opening uh, course, well, a lesson on Friday, but that's with a student of mine, uh, Sophie, and that's a personalized lesson. Uh, she's studying the Benoni, so we have been seeing a lot of Benoni lately. Capablanca games. Why chess 24 promoting coaches? Because coaches uh, is part of chess 24. Positional chess. Yes, positional chess. Okay, got that. King's Gambit. Continue with Benoni. Yes, we will continue as, uh, as far as Sophie uh, wants to see. At some point, we will probably uh, switch from the Benoni. She will probably get tired of seeing so much Benoni. But for now, uh, we are sticking to that. Calculation, okay. So instructive games and uh, positional games, classical games, you guys suggested. For the opening phase, I would suggest a more uh, personalized um, coaching like going, you know, going to coaches and finding yourself a trainer. Well, uh, me and my colleagues are there for you. And there's actually a discount still, still going on. If I can analyze the games of Mikhail Tal, that's a suggestion I'm going to take into consideration. What's my rating? Uh, right now, I think it was 22.56, if I'm, I remember correctly. It was a long time uh, since I played the, <laughs> the last over the board tournament. How can you improve your rating? Well, that requires a lot of work, a lot of studying chess. Will it be a Skype lesson? No, the lessons are conducted on Coaches and Coaches is a platform that has everything integrated. So that's where you have the video, that's where we will be talking and that's where we have the chessboard. So you don't need uh, any additional um, app to have uh, the lessons. What else? Karokan. Who am I supporting today? Carlson vs. Hikaru. I have been supporting Carlson from the beginning, um, but I have to admit I had lost faith after a few, <laughs> after the first three uh, three matches I saw Nakamura was uh, in a very good shape but yesterday uh, Carlsen did show very good chess so my faith is back weaknesses yes I've seen this suggestion before that's something I was considering finding weaknesses and, and positional chess yeah how not to be lazy while calculation and oh, that depends on you right I have never been to India. Okay. How can I improve my opening? Um, how can you improve your opening? A lot of studying, uh, but not only studying openings. Um, I like to 
before looking uh, further into start studying the opening, like actually looking at the lines and uh, uh, learning a lot of theory, this is something that I'm doing right now with uh, my student Sophie with the Benoni. Uh, we are looking a lot at classical games and that's a very good a way to to learn the openings because you start by learning the plans you start by learning the the problems of that opening you start by learning what your opponent wants to do what you want to do uh, and then all the moves that you will be learning in in the theory part will make a lot more sense for you um, because if you just uh, learn uh, the moves that's that's going to be very difficult to remember end games especially okay Life puzzles. Um, well, I do post puzzles <laughs> on my page, so you can follow me for that. Choosing from candidate moves. Yeah, okay. We should first improve end games, middle games, and openings. Yeah, that's what Capablanca says, no? Okay, I think uh, we will stop it. For how much time will be the lesson on coaches? Uh, you mean the free lessons? I don't know that yet, but you can always go on coaches and book yourself uh, a lesson, which is uh, one hour long usually. But of course, if you if you want more than one hour, you are free to to book more than one. All right, thank you guys very much for watching. We will stop uh, here today, and uh, let's see what happens in Carson Nakamura today. So. See you on Friday for my lesson with Sophie. Uh, take care. Bye.